This video is sponsored by DJI. In most of my videos, I'm doing some sort of teardown or repairing something or buying a whole bunch of broken stuff to try and fix it. This video is gonna be a little bit different. Introducing the DJI RoboMaster S1. Most of the time I'm tearing things down to fix them. Today, I'm gonna be building something. Once I get the box open, I have one tray of parts the instruction manual usually i just throw these things away but i might want to keep this one around and then the second tray of parts so we're just going to get right into it and start by building the wheels first things first we need to put a little dab of grease in each of these little pivots here that these wheel pieces will pivot into the robomaster s1 is an educational robot inspired by the dgi robomaster competition the S1 offers comprehensive control and an immersive driving experience thanks to the omnidirectional chassis, agile mechanum wheels, flexible gimbal, and stable low latency image transmission in first person view. Users can also target objects and battle other robots with the S1's blaster. The S1 supports Scratch and Python programming with DJI's project-based graded tutorials. Users can gradually master programming theory and robot system knowledge. Once these are all greased, we can load this into this big hub right here. Then we take one of the black hubs and the rubber rings and load the rubber ring around the black hub like that. Then we line up these three marks with the red mark on this wheel hub. Then we load all the tread around the tire. Once we have all the tread loaded, we line up this little arrow mark right here with the arrow right here. And we make sure all of these tread pins are correctly lined up with this top plate. And now that that's all lined up and installed correctly, we need to put in the screws. Now that this wheel is done, we just need to do that three more times for each of the other wheels. Now all the wheels are done, I do want to note there are two extra treads, which is actually really cool in case any of these, you know, get a gouge or wear out somehow, they do include two extra tread. Now that we've got all the wheels done, let's move on to step number 16. Next, we're installing cable detainer D4 right down here snaps into place and we got one screw that goes right there and there we go now we're in installing these four screws and these two screws now that those are installed we can install the screws on this front piece we have two screws here and two screws down here then we need to slide D3 onto this pin right here, like that, and install this into the body of the robot. We need to make sure that this can move just like that. Then we can install two screws here and two screws right here. Now we need to grab B1 and snap it into place. Then we'll take a P1, which is a hit detector, and we will install it into Q6. After we get that done, we need to install the medium-sized cable, a Q3, out the edge of this piece of armor. Then we can install the armor onto the side of the robot. Now we're going to route the cable through this notch and the notch down here through the cable router here and then up through to the place we're going to plug it in, which is right here. And this one gets plugged in right here. Now we're going to do the exact same thing with the other side armor and sensor and then we'll plug it in over here. That gets plugged into this first plug in right here. And now we basically do the same thing with Q5. We put a P1 in and then route the cable up through this controller. Now with that all done, plugged in, the hinges tighten down. 
Now we can install our first motor. So here we have the motor housing and we have our first motor. We need to install the cable through the motor like this. And put the motor in the housing until the cable comes out and looks just like that. Then we need to install the screws. We have our first motor installed in the housing. Now I just need to do that three more times. And there we go, there's the last motor. Now we can start installing them into the robot. We need to route this cable through here, up through this cable management bracket, across here through the cable management bracket down here, and then up to our connectors up here. Now we have the first one done, we gotta put the screws in and then do that with all three of the other wheels and then we'll be done with the wheels. Got our cable management all squared away underneath. Now we have all four of the wheels installed. Let's move on to the next step. Now time to install the wheels. It looks like the trick to this is make sure that you have the opposite tread on each side. In the instruction manual, it does show you this very carefully so you don't mess it up. Now we just need to install the wheels on and then we'll have a rolling robot. Okay, and here we have a rolling robot. Cool thing about these wheels is that it can actually like roll sideways, which is going to be amazing, I think. I can't wait to finish getting this thing ready. Let's move on to the next step. Now we need to install a P1 into this front armor, plug it in and install it onto the robot. This rubber piece does go on this middle part and then some rubber bushings go on these pins right here. Then we can route the cable through, push this piece on, and then screw it down. Now I'm going to install the gimbal. We've got three tabs on the gimbal that line up with three tabs on the base. So it should just line up like this. And there we go. Now we need to install the screws and this will be installed. And we have the gimbal fully installed. Now we just need to install the speaker onto the blaster. Till we hear a click like that. Now we slide the blaster in, line up the screw holes and the pins, and then we can screw it in. Now we'll plug the blaster into this bottom connector. Then we need to attach the controller to the top. Once that's attached on top, we can put the screws in and attach the connector. Now we can attach the DJI camera right here, then we'll attach a cable from the camera up to the controller, and then we'll also plug in the speaker connection into the controller as well. Now I'm going to connect these two cables to the controller over on the back of the robot. Then we can flip this down and put the screws in to keep it that way. Now I do have this magazine for the little, I think they're like gel beads or something. I don't have any of those right now, so I'm not going to install this yet, but we do need to put the bottom skid plate on and then I think we'll be done. And here we go. We've got it all built. That was actually a super fun build. I really enjoyed it. If you're looking for something to do with your kids, or if you just want to do a fun project yourself, I highly recommend this. This was a really cool build. This is a very quality machine, and it looks really fun to operate, but now we have to see if it turns on and works. I started the battery charging before I started this build, so it should be all ready to go. Let's try it out. 
I have the RoboMaster app downloading right now. So we're gonna install the battery. Turn it on. Whoa. Okay, that's cool. So one of the cool features in this new update is intercom mode, so I can record something onto my phone and the RoboMaster will play it back. Let's give it a try. Don't forget to subscribe to Tronics Fix. Don't forget to subscribe to Tronics Fix. And there you have it. Another cool feature of this latest update is the Master Board. It allows you to see how your ranking stacks up against other RoboMaster users around the world. The RoboMaster S1 seamlessly integrates learning, competitive action, and fun. Through Road to Mastery and Robo Academy, users can complete various project-based tasks and courses combining programming with physics, mathematics, and AI knowledge. The continually updated tutorial videos and teaching resources will enable users to get an in-depth understanding of the technological details of the S1 and strengthen their all-around understanding of robotics. One of the other cool features of the DJI RoboMaster S1 is you can actually connect up a PS4 controller so you can control it with this controller. You do have to do that with a third-party app. There are probably several that work, but I'm using Octopus. This app only works on Androids, and I'll show you how it works. So once you have the app installed on your Android device, you can start up the DJI RoboMaster app inside the Octopus app, and then you'll get this little Octopus guy right here. If you press on that, then you'll get this. So I have this set up currently, so the left stick is over here, the right stick is over here, and that'll control the gimbal, and then I have the right trigger on the laser button. Now these are all configurable, I can actually take this and move it all around wherever I want to, but we do need to have it right here because that is where the button is in the app. So I'll press the check button, you can see this little circle, hopefully you can see, there's two little circles right there, and that's where I put the overlay for the Octopus app. Now that's basically all there is to it as far as setting it up in this. You can set the other buttons on the controller to press on different areas of the screen through the Octopus app, just like I showed you with the other three. Now we have that set up, I'll use the controller and show you how it works. So I'm now just using the PS4 controller to do all the controls on the RoboMaster S1. If you remember, the right trigger was set up for the laser, so if we press that, it should shoot the laser. Let's try it out, here we go. Yep, there we go. I also have it set up so the left stick controls the forward and back movement. So there we go. And then I have the right stick to control the gimbal movement. Now I am pressing just very gently so the gimbal moves just a little bit. You can also make it move faster or however you'd like it to move. Now I'll show you using the PS4 controller in a little bit bigger space. In my opinion, the PS4 controller is easier to use than the DJI app, just because it's easier for me to be a little bit more precise with my movements. Now this is the first time I've really driven the S1 in a open area, and I've never been that great of an RC driver, so you can't really judge too much how well the controller works, but I can say that it is easy to operate with the controller, especially since I'm familiar with the PS4 controller layout from playing games. And if you're used to playing games with the DualShock 4, then using it to control the robot should work pretty well for you as you're gonna be used to the layout. And the other nice thing is you can map the buttons to whatever controls you want on the S1, so that's super handy as well. So that is how you can use the PS4 controller to control all the options on the DJI RoboMaster S1. If you're interested in purchasing this DJI RoboMaster S1 for yourself, I'll put an affiliate link down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a good one.